children to make this particular class out of those rules and etiquettes uh, of fasting. <laughs> now, this may be different to what some of you may have been exposed to, and may be very different to what you expected. But rather than give you just the hadith and talk about the merit, because I am part of the class who will be on that, uh, a considerable amount of time within this class will be based on the rulings and the ahkam that you all need in order for your fast to be valid and also things you need to be aware of. Right? And this is what's called fiqh, fiqh the deen. And you are, uh, those of you who are committed, and so I expect, if I was sat where you are, given the amount of uh, knowledge that will be imparted to us today, you perhaps, you will need to write things down, because there's a lot of details I'm giving you, and I don't need to be going over things twice or three times because you haven't been them now. So please write them down. I see one or two people already writing them down, which is good. Uh, and it gives me a lot of confidence. We are going to be focused on uh, the rulings from the Shafiqi school. We spent the past five or six months perhaps looking at that Islam has four, the Sunni Orthodoxy has four schools, the Hanifis, the Malikis, the Shafi'is, and the Hanbalis. My kind of experience and uh, knowledge is within the Shafi'i schools, so I'm going to be giving you uh, the rulings of fasting uh, with, with a viewpoint of the Shafi'i school. All four schools are valid, uh, either one is able enough to observe them. Any of them uh, is suitable for you to become uh, practicing and become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The idea of madness is that it brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any one of the four you wish to take, take, get on, and move in a direction which is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Now, I want to ask a question before you begin. How many of you have studied uh, the chapter of fasting according to one school. And I don't mean when you were young. I mean the past two, three years. Fasting. Hands up high. One book of two. At the Ascent to Felicity Hanafi book. Okay, you don't have it. Anybody else? Right, okay, yeah. So, <clears throat> with, it, that's probably a good point here in that uh, uh, the earlier they say, the scholars say that before you engage, in an act of worship, you have to know how to perform that act of worship. So before you go to Hajj, you have to know the rulings. You can't just go along and just I'll copy everybody else. Because the chances are you're gonna mess up. Same thing with a cat. You can't just buy and give a 20 pound off. Well no, you need to know the rulings. When is the cat due? How to give it out and who you give it to? And what you do you have to give it out. These are rulings. And fasting is the same. Also marriage, huh? the word that I say is haram uh, for you to end marriage is an act of worship. It's haram for you to engage in act of worship. But you're not in the rulings. So therefore, if you get married and you're ignorant, we have a lot of ignorant people. When you are married, how do you have to marriage? It's a sin. Because you may be doing things, but it's impossible. And in marriage, it's, it's severe. Because if you end up saying, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you, you can't say, well, I don't know that. Well, this is my because that's something you should know. Well, nobody told me. That's your fault. You should go there, then you have to stop. Uh, and so in that light, in that regard, the fact that you guys haven't done uh, 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 fasting is it more relevant. And the first thing is you to know the rules. How do you do that? And the hadith the Prophet says, Whoever Allah wants good for, He gives them, male or female, Whoever huh? Allah wants good for, He gives them knowledge of the deen and the way this fiqh, huh? fiqh 
what's the topic that we're in today. So if Allah wants good for you, he gives you knowledge of the deen. He gives you faith. Play it. Question. If Allah doesn't want good for you, then what? Based on the hadith. If Allah wants good for you, he gives you understanding of the deen. If the opposite is true, Allah does not want good for you, then what? You don't get knowledge. You don't get knowledge. Hmm? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there's no good for you, you don't get knowledge of it. This there's no space for you in Allah. In fact, in the first verse of the Quran is called Iqa. Huh? Tell me. Right? There should be no one who sat in front of me. And I stress, there should be no one who sat in front of me yeah. or listening. Uh, that has not been fit. That dish again. And more so committee members than ice socks. More so. You guys have to learn your fit. There is no excuse. Uh, if, a, if, a, if a sister does not know the rulings uh, of when she can pray and when she can't pray, for example, a menstrual cycle, you have to know. Guys, you have to know when, when, when to have a muscle. When the when's the it? What things can validate the prayer? How do these things? Zakat could be due on you guys, and you guys are oblivious. You're in sin. You're in sin, why? Right? You don't lose it. So fiqh huh, is an obligation. Studying knowledge, uh, what the minimum of what you need to know in, 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 your, in your salah, zakat, and hajj, and fasting, you have to know. So today, inshallah, is a step in which you will, at least in terms of fasting, you will, be able, you will know exactly what you do, um, the bare minimum knowledge, and if you to fast correctly, uh, and you'll, make, you'll get a great deal out of it, inshallah. Right? This is it. So with, with that in mind, inshallah, we'll begin. We'll break for a little bit. We'll have a break, and towards the end, we'll break for our sister's If our sisters like to leave prior, you guys can see prior for what you can. And there'll be a Q&A. Can I ask? Uh, questions to the end, and no doubt there's going to be a lot of questions. And that's the yeah. nature of, of it. it. You know, it brings up questions. I have no problems answering questions, but questions to the end because I have a lot to do. I have a lot to do. And again, take notes. Like this minute, the chapter of fasting. So fasting, the word fasting in Arabic uh, means to refrain. To refrain. And in the Sharia, in our deen, it means to refrain from the things that invalidate one's fast. Refraining from the things that invalidate one's fast from the time of Fajr coming in until sunset with a specific intention. With what? A specific intention. That's the definition of fasting. I'll repeat it again. Fasting is to refrain from all things that invalidate your fast from the time of failure into the sunset with a specific intention. What's the Quranic justification of fasting? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladina amin, kutiba alaykum as siyam, kama kutiba ala ladina al qadrikum, ya alaykum taktakum. O you who believe, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses you, O you who believe, it's an address of honor. He's honoring you. Yeah, you're not in. Uh, or you do believe. Is that not an honoring address? Allah saying, or you do believe. Because uh, again, you're careful. You said that. Or oh, oh, you, yeah, you're insane. But or oh, you do believe. It's a sheriff. It's an honor. It's a badge of, of, of honor and distinction. So, or oh, you do believe. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you. So we are continuing a act of worship that 
was known previously, previous Ulam, previous uh, 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 religions that we believe about God, previous prophets has something similar. And the reason why we fast, why you must fast? Because Allah said so. But what does Allah say specifically? The reason fast, so that you may have God consciousness or a fear of God. Taqwa. So taqwa is the fruit by which uh, that you kind of want to eat metaphorically uh, during the month of Ramadan and after. Right. Now, when did fasting become prescribed? It became prescribed the second year of the Hijrah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know, moved from Mecca to where? To Medina. In the second year after the Hijrah, our Islamic calendar started with the Hijrah, right? Said the Umar al-Khattab, made that as the year zero. Fasting became prescribed in the second year. Right? Before that, there was no month of fasting. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fasted nine Ramadans. Nine Ramadans. All of them were 29 days. And one was 30 days. And we're going to come on to that later about moonlighting. Inshallah, if we have time, Allah, please ask questions. We'll talk about sighting and moon. But the month of Ramadan is a ninth month in the Islamic calendar. Again, you guys, as committed Muslims, you should know the Islamic calendar. Right? It's 12 months. You should know them. Yes, the, 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 the 12 months. Very important. Okay? You should know that Ramadan. Welcome after Ramadan. Shawwal. After Shawwal, Muqa'ala. Then Muhammad. Then Muhammad. Then after Muhammad, what? Safar. After Safar? Rabbi Al-Awwal. MashaAllah. Rabbi Al-Thani. Jamal Al-Mula. Jamal Al-Thani. And so on and so forth. These are months that you have to know. As committed Muslims, you know, it's important for you to know these things. Because within each of these months, Allah has hidden something uh, in which there is a, an opportunity for, for which you can look and trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each month has something in it, a gift placed within. Okay? And the reason why it's the best of the months. Why is it called Ramadan? Yeah. They say that when the, when the Arabs came to actually naming specific months, that the month, that this particular month of the Lord Ramadan came in the depths of the Surah, the, the hottest month. So they, they, they said, okay, let's call this Ramadan from the word Ramla, or Ramla. Ramla in Arabic means intense heat. Intense heat. And some scholars say that the month of Ramadan burns your sins uh, like the heat. Okay? And it burns your sins. And then that's our sins uh, do get forgiven. Right. There are many hadiths. And at the end, inshallah, I'm going to spend time because I want you guys to kind of be awake for these rulings. And then we'll talk about the hadiths and what they need and the benefits therein. <coughs> The rulings of fasting. Fasting is either be okay in, in, in a Sharia, in Islamic law, sacred law, there are five rulings. I need you to write this down. There are five rulings. The first is wajib, wajib, which means obligatory. Okay? Another word for wajib is fard. So wajib and fard is the first out of the five classifications. The scholars have looked up what are the acts that human beings can do and have broken down them, broken them into five categories. Every single act you can do fits into five categories. It can either be obligatory, in Arabic, wajib or fard. In the hand school, the difference. Keep it simple. Wajib or fard means you have to do it. And you are rewarded when you're doing it. That's the first. What is it called? Obligatory. In Arabic, wajib or fard. The second is, uh, Recommended. Recommended. And the scholars have different words. Either it's sunnah or mustahab. Either way, it means recommended. When we say something is recommended, in the deen, yet, it means that doing it, you are rewarded. Doing it, you are rewarded. But if you don't, if you don't do it, there's no sin. The 
that if you don't do it, there is no sin. It's recommended. Understand? That's number two. Number three is makro, the slight. <coughs> makro, the slight. Which means that leaving this act, which is the slight, you are rewarded for leaving it. But should you do it, there's no sin. That's called the slight, makro. Leaving it, you are rewarded. But doing it, there's no sin. That's more cruel. Let me have one more Then we have what's called mubah, which is permissible. What category one number we are now? Ah. Four or three? Four. Mubah. Mubah means permissible. And the vast majority of human acts fall within this. The vast majority of human acts is permissible. Right? Whether you do it or don't do it, there's no sin. There's no reward, there's no sin. Like, you know, I sit down. Is it haram? No. Is it dislike? No. Is it wajib? No. It's right, just permissible. I can stand up and sit down. The vast majority of our acts, our human actions, for it's a permissibility. This idea of everything is haram, it, 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 nah. There are only a few things. But in terms of things which are permissible, whether you do it or don't do it, or engage in it or don't engage, there's no sin, nor that is there a reward. And the last is what? What's missing? Have a look. Hello. What's the last one? Haram. Okay. That's the last. Obviously, haram again is doing it, you are sinful. And you put yourself in the position of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'ala. Allah may forgive you, but the idea is that you are sinful and you're putting yourself in, uh, in, in the being put by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you leave something which is haram, you are rewarded. Uh, you are rewarded. Doing it is what? Haram. Simple. If you leave it, I make a conscious effort to avoid. Whatever it is, haram, you get your reward. And we know in the Mr. Maharaj, uh, the Prophet was given the fifty first and got narrowed down to fifty, alhamdulillah, which the scholars say that's one of the merits of the Prophet. He has that rank of all the prophets. Musa had to tell the Prophet, go and ask. Nobody has that rank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to take down the prayer from fifty who all went down to five. Scholars use that as, is, uh, as a proof that to show that the Prophet's merit and rank is higher over the Prophet's. The Ulama and the Sunnah and the Jama'ah. Wait, I don't want to say that. And yet, so it is said that if a person intends to do something haram, what? Intends. They intend to do something haram, but they don't. It's something different, right? Person, I intend to go out and do zina or drink alcohol, but I don't. At phone call from here, on the ISOC, you know, what's up, or, you know, advertisements, ISOC uh, events, they will talk tonight. No, I think it goes back. Instead of going to do haram. Uh, they had the intention to do haram. But because they never did it, they're rewarded. They're rewarded. Because they never did it. And that example is true. Uh, that's a true example. MashaAllah, a um, couple years ago, when the sisters in the WhatsApp group texted, uh, tonight, inshallah, we're going to go and uh, um, have a, an event. And this particular uh, sister, um, she's feeling low at that particular moment. And she was going about, about to go out um, and do haram with her friends. But that text kind of saved her. And how much she kind of adjusted uh, <coughs> what she was going to do. She was doing some, some khair. Again, mashallah, uh, Islamic society has a, a profound effect. Probably greater than you even know, because nobody's going to tell you, you know, if, well, if it wasn't for you guys, you know, I would have gone and done haram, if it wasn't for you guys, so you have guys have a big effect uh, and continue to do so. Uh, which is why knowledge is important. Knowledge is important. You mess it, you give, you know, you make the wrong decisions based on lack of knowledge, you pay the, you pay the price of that. So, Ramadan, sisters, where's it fall into? Haram? Recommended? Invisible? The past? Hands up. Where does it fall into? 
Also, wie viel haben es? 3, 4, 5, okay. The system has a pattern. You have it, you have it. Fast in, Ramadan? Sunnah, okay, okay. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same, it's the same. Obviously, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say what? Probably. Sunnah, but just bear with me. If we're to say Ramadan is Sunnah, based on the definition I've given you, which is, which is recommended, what would that mean? You don't do it, you're not punished. Ah, now that's not true, is it? That's not true. So Ramadan is obligatory, as she said. Thank you. Making up a fast a mist. Brothers, making up a firm fast a mist. It's fog. You have to make fog. And you have to make you know, you know, to make up something. Anyone know? Brothers? Qadr. Hands up. Qadr. 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 Right. In terms of fasting, uh, generally fasting is recommended. Outside of Ramadan's exception, outside of Ramadan, fasting is supposed to have recommended. And, and that's the al-asl, that's the foundation. So when we look at Sunnah fasts, we find there are three groups. That which is repeated every single year. Annual fasts. Like what? Fasting of Arafah. You fast Yom Arafah. Sunnah to fast Yom Arafah. Yom Arafah is the day before what? Eid. Which Eid? Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha. And the hadith says a person fasts the day of Arafah, their previous sins, and the upcoming year's sins are forgiven. Yes? That's Sunnah. The fast of the Tasu'a wa Ashura, the ninth and the tenth of Allah. Of Muharram. That's also Sunnah. What's the reward there? Your previous year's sins are forgiven. Your previous year's sins are forgiven. Question Why your Mu'arafa is last year's sins forgiven and the upcoming year's sins forgiven? But at Tasu'a wa Ashura, also Sunnah. Only last year since the other day. Who knows? Have you noticed that? You fast out of last year since and upcoming year since are like the other. Whereas uh, Ashura or Tasura, only last year since are forgiven, not the upcoming year. Why? Anyway, from our from the sister. Anyway, from brothers. Is it because it has a coincide with the season of Hajj? Is this based on knowledge? Or ishtihad? In that case, are you a mushtahid? Mushtahid. And if you are a mushtahid, which one? Yeah, I heard it. Facts. You heard? Yeah. Online? There was a yes or thought. He said, does it at the beginning of the year? It's uh, the year before that year and the year after that year, but the one uh, just before Hajj is the uh, Hajj end of the year, which is the last year. Wait, let me, uh, that's too confusing. Let me tell you what the, uh, I'm sure you can explain the philosophy on that. But yeah, that's his idea. What the Rehnam has said is that Arafah, the day of Arafah, is a fast that is specific to the Muslims. Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Ashura was sunnah the Ben Israel used to do. And because of the merit of this ummah, Kuntum Khayr al you were the best of the nations, Bukhira and Nas. Allah subhanahu has favored this ummah by having last year's sins forgiven and this year's sins forgiven because this is a fast that's specific to this ummah. So Allah's generosity is the last year's sins. And next year, since that we've been in conversation, this is a, a, a specific to the Ummah of the Prophet, the Ummah of other, other nations that have it. Okay, that's a very beautiful, uh, 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 generic uh, explanation. Al-Qur'an, 
Uh, and as well, I can have some fast or will suffice for that. Right, as for fasts, which are weekly, what are they? Back and forth. Fasts which are monthly. Any ideas? Go on, Fatima. Good, what are they called? Okay, good, mashallah. 13th, 14th, and 15th. Is that going to be a boring comment? No, what is that? It's going to the huh? Asana calendar. Good. The 13th, 14th, and 15th. That happens what? Every month. So now we have an annual fast, so a monthly fast. 13th, 14th, and 15th. And as she rightly said, they call them white nights. Brothers, why are they called white nights? Hands up. Why are they called white nights? I mean, the moon is full on the 13th, on the 14th, and the 15th. Hence the name. What? Is the white. Recommend to fast the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And we're going to say it is recommended to fast three days a month, at least. At least three days a month. And you can fast uh, the white days, fast the calendar, which is good. 13th, 14th. According to the Islamic calendar. Again, this ties in with this idea. Inshallah. We've got three unions, right? Three, we've got hold hands up, please, we'll hold. One. Anyway, there's hope. LJ Good. You know? Good. Listen, this is what I, I hope and I, I, and I strongly encourage. If you do this, inshallah, uh, there's a lot of reward for all of you, all of you, I And I think you guys are the first to do it in the whole country. Right? I want you guys to form a committee. Between yourselves for moon cycle. A moon cycle committee based on all three aspects. A joint uh, committee in which you guys go and look for the moon. How and all do you know that? I'll explain all that at a separate time. That's something I really, really, really want because it's a sunnah. And it's, if you can revive this sunnah, uh, there's a lot of reward. You guys are the first to do that. Hopefully, you set the trend. Love guys, socks. In this country, but I think Luke will be the first to do that. I'm not aware of any other uh, Islamists that don't tell anybody else. Don't tell anybody else. Keep it for yourself for now. But I'm not aware of any of them out there. Why should we name it? Nobody watches anyway, just to criticize. So I can do that, maybe to watch as well. But yeah, I want you guys, uh, and it's a serious thing, uh, that this is a Sunnah and nobody does it anymore. Nobody does this Sunnah. And it's, it's, it's problematic. And um, a generation of, of students like yourselves, inshallah, uh, are the best people to get, get it going, inshallah. That's something I want to see happen, inshallah. Training, I've been training you. It's very easy, but it's very fun to do. Uh, but it needs a, a, a class to do that. Not, not really difficult, inshallah. Uh, moon cycling is done every single month. Not just one of them. It's a sunnah, and if you revive the sunnah, so I want to see that, inshallah. I want you guys to be the first in the country to set up a, a, a community within the Islamic societies uh, to get the site of the moon. It's very easy to do, not very difficult. And you don't have to go to a high mountain. You're out of the block, down the road, you can see that. If you know how and where and when. Very simple. And then we have... Um, the uh, New Crescent Society. Are you familiar with that? New Crescent Society. <coughs> Instagram generation, take your phones out. Go to now. Okay, pop your little button. Go to uh, the Instagram, go to New Crescent Society on Instagram. New Crescent Society. New Crescent Society. Got it? New Crescent Society. Have you all found it? Press follow. Easy Press follow. Those of you who've got Facebook, 
and I'll call uh, on, on Facebook, we also have a lot of new code society. I wanted to keep an eye on that, you know, because when you guys get together and form this um, new sighting committee between the ISOCs, uh, you're going to report your sighting to that website and feed in. And you'll be part of a nationwide effort for you guys to be the first few to do it. Okay, I think they all I really want to see that in the ISOX, inshallah. And you know what? It doesn't take many people, one person, to see the ISOX. You can have, have as many as you want, but literally it's one man, or one woman, or all. But have, have as many as you want, but we need that to happen, inshallah. Very good. Moving on. That's the awakening. Which is what? Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays and Thursdays are a recommended fast uh, every week. For those who, who are married in, in this hyper sexualized era, fasting is strongly recommended for those in order to be able to manage their sexual desires, male or female. So fasting is too much for you, though. It helps you manage your desires. <laughs> it is more cruel. Dislike. What's more cruel mean? Dislike. If I do something more cruel, dislike. Is it haram? Is it haram? No. no. So, it is disliked to single out Friday as a fast. I'm going to fast Jumma specifically. Why? No reason. That's Jumma. That's dislike. Similarly, I'm going to single out Saturday by itself. Why? No reason. I want to fast Saturday. Or Sunday. That is the slack. Not haram. Not haram. Unless it coincides with your with Alpha or, uh, uh, or any Sunday fast, then it's okay. But if you just say, I'm going to sing it on Friday to fast by itself, it's correct to fast. But it's more cool. Fair enough. Unless you want to do it, unless you make me fast a day before, that's it. Anyway. When is it haram to fast? When is it, what days are haram to fast? Eh? Yeah, are there any days that are haram to fast? Eid. Alright, which Eid? Both Eids, yes, good. Shoulder. Both Eids are haram to fast. If you fasted, would you, it's haram, but would you fast be correct? Haram. Both days. Eid al Adha, which is what some of you call the bigger Eid, like Hajj Eid, from the corner. The three days after, 11th, 12th, and the 13th, it's called Ayyam al Tashriq. They're also haram to fast. The three days after the bigger Eid, Eid al Adha, Hajj Eid, fasting the three days after, because Eid is in the 10th, right? Eid is in the 10th. Fast the 11th, 12th, and 13th, not allowed. Haram. There, three days a week. Alright? Okay. And this book is what for you. It's just a time when you want. And then you start on one. Okay, okay. Right. The conditions. The conditions. Conditions you need for your fast to be correct. Conditions you need to be a fast to be correct. Four. Number one, you have to be Muslim. And Islam. You have to be, you have to be Muslim. So if somebody left Islam, yeah, somebody left Islam during the day, okay, the whole fact that the fast is gone. Because you have to be Muslim. Number two, you have to have uh, uh, agony, the uh, uh, intellect. If you, if you, if insanity, if you become insane, uh, your fast is invalid. Okay, if you become insane, just moment, momentarily, if you do you insanity, your fast is invalid. Okay. Number three, for women, you have to be free from period 
I'm postnatal bleeding for the guys. I don't know what carries on. Postnatal bleeding is the blood that comes out of a woman, I mean, for example, when she's pregnant, after she's given birth, there's a, uh, an amount of days, okay, which you know, maybe 40 to 60, perhaps no, no more than 60, in which a woman has a very long period called postnatal bleeding. A woman who's like that does not fast. So, should a woman, a woman has to be uh, pure, for lack of a better word, the whole day. The whole day. If she starts her period two minutes before mother, I know this is familiar, but the guys, they don't want to give up. If a woman, two minutes before mother, that she's fasting in the middle of the summer, mashallah, 9.40, uh, 9.40 is mother. 9.38, she starts her period. That day now is gone, she has to make it up. Because the, of the whole day, she has to be free from uh, impurities. Okay. Now, you may choose to fast in the winter. Uh, days are shorter. But there's no guarantee you're going to live that long. And I'll show you, uh, remind me to make a note. Um, I'll tell you about the ways that, uh, in which you can do that with the six day plan. Remind me about the six, about six days of fasting and put multiple intentions. And remind me, and I'll, I'll tell you something at the end. Right, the opposite. The opposite. Let's say uh, um, half. Let's say an hour before mother. Right? Okay. Let's say okay, halfway through the halfway through the day of fasting, so they have it. And then, mashallah, midday she finishes. Now, what? Does she have to fast? No. But it's recommended for her to uh, uh, to sack, to like eat. Recommended. Recommended. Should a woman say, right, uh, I don't care, I want to fast, I'm going to miss out all the reward, X, Y, Z. I'm going to fast. I just want to tell you. Haram. It's haram. And the way to look at this is this. The same God, Jannah Jadam, who told you to fast, is telling you now not to fast. And by you listening to him, you are rewarded. Him to tell that other. You are obeying Allah. When Allah says fast, you get rewarded. When Allah says, take a break, you don't have to fast, you're also rewarded. Inshallah. And there's other things you can do. There's other things you can do. And the fourth thing from the condition to your fast to be correct is to know that the day of fasting is a day in which you can fast. I.e., not an eat. Yeah, you've got to know that the day is a day that you can fast. Shut up. All right, next category. Should you fulfill the following conditions? Should you, these make notes, should you fulfill the following conditions, the fasting becomes obligatory while you are fasting. You have to fast. These are the conditions. If you find yourself with all these conditions, fasting now is obligatory. You have to fast. What? Number one. And there are five conditions. The first is an Islam. You can't be Muslim. If somebody is not Muslim, do they have to fast? Somebody asked me after Jum'ah, can I fast? He wasn't Muslim. And he prayed Jum'ah with us, which is amazing, mashallah. I don't know what I said about other people who are praying Jum'ah. Allah, Allah, Allah. But hey, hey, yes, mashallah, uh, praying Jum'at, not Muslim. And, you know, this, this is the Muslim. not Muslim. Show me the Muslim. And he asked me, can I fast? Uh, is it valid if I fast? And I said, you can fast. But it doesn't count. He said, why? Because you're not Muslim. So you may experience, and you will experience some kind of spirituality, and you will. But you won't get the full experience. Because you're not Muslim. The key for that is to become Muslim. That's how you gain uh, um, the full experience. And you can't, I'm not sure you kind of got it. So I said, look, if, I, if you 
you don't unroll on a cross, yeah, and you just go along to the cross, do you gain the degree at the end of that cross? You have to roll, you just kind of walk down the side of the back. I don't know, it's not how much of a life you want to do, because you're a class, you have to do. Do you get accredited just coming along? Why not? Why not? Why? Because you haven't enrolled. And in Islam, you enroll. So you get accredited. Well. So a non-believer in this world is not the man of the fast. Like, how about somebody who leaves Islam? Alright. That has a different room. Does anybody know what they're called? Hands up. Apostate. Murtad, there you are. Murtad. <clears throat> in the books of fiqh, that has a whole chapter by itself. And a person who comes and apostates, Murtad uh, uh, has it does um, uh, Rinda. By either saying certain things, <clears throat> doing certain things, actually, or believing certain things. Uh, that's how we'll take you out of Islam. And we are in an age <clears throat> where this is happening more than it should be. And there's reasons for that. And one of the biggest reasons is a crisis in spirituality. People no longer feel spiritual in their faith. And therefore, they, 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 they then say, well, if I'm not in anything in Islam, I don't feel spiritual. I don't feel close to Allah. Huh? I'm going to be Islam. And they do that. And I've seen them. And I'm, I would, if I bet it was halal, which is not haram, if bet it was halal, no doubt someone's watching this, copy that out, paste that out. If, if it was, all right, I would say that some of you here would know somebody that has left Islam. Well, I'm not going to ask you, but you know that there is. I don't know, I have best friends that have left. That individual who's left Islam, okay, they have to make it up when they come back to Islam. It's uh, wild. Obligatory upon them, should they return back to Islam, it's wild upon them to, to make up that. And the Salah, and the Zakah. You have to make it all up. That's the first thing you need to say. Alright? Number two. Number two. You have to be what's called Mukallif. Mukallif means legally responsible. And that doesn't mean the age of 16. I'm legally responsible. No. Legally responsible in the Shia. It means that you become Balik Adam. You've reached the age where you you when you reach puberty and you have intellect. Okay? So if somebody has had not reached the age of puberty, either a child, do they have to fast? No, because they are not mukellif. What does mukellif mean? Legally responsible, because they're a child. Understand that? If a child wants to fast, I want to try it out. Yeah, you can try it out. Recommend as well, let them get used to it. But you don't have to, you don't force it. Okay. Right. Number three. Number three is the ability to fast. Uh, the ability to fast. Ay al qudra to have the ability to fast. And here there are two categories. There are two categories. And when it comes to ability, the scholars break it down to two. Physical ability. To be physically able to fast. I mean, you're able, you're healthy enough to fast. So somebody that is very old, very old, is an excuse for fasting. Because they're very old. They don't have, they don't have that ability. They always let many try and they do. Or somebody that is terminally ill. What does that mean? Terminally ill. Hands up, sisters first. Ladies, ladies first. Terminally ill, sit at the back. You know what terminally ill means? The second one, that's the way. Huh? You're the last one. Oh, sit at the back. Terminally ill. Anything else? Terminally ill. You're a huh? man. Is it like when you're basically almost going to die? Anybody else? Huh? This is no medicine. Wash off. Tell me the definition. 
You die. <laughs> Cannot be cured. Huh? Cannot be cured. Cannot be. You Google that? Yes. You think him? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So many like that. They're always sick. They're always sick. And a sickness that prevents them from fasting, they're exempt. Why? They don't have the ability. They do not have the ability. I said that there's two subcategories of ability. There's another one that says Shana'ah, where according to the Shia, you're, you're unable to fast. Sisters, hint, hint, you're going to be others. But the Shia said you're not allowed to fast. Those who are the failures, and most people are leaving. If you're in that situation, the Shia said you won't be able to fast. Are you physically able? Like, Physically, yeah, you could. Yeah, it might be tired, it might be difficult. But physically, you could. But here, we're not looking at physical. Look at the Shia. The Shia says that. Right? Two kind of abilities. Right. Alright. We're on number one. One number now, Four. 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 Right? What was the first one? Islam. What was the second one? To be really responsible. What was the third one? Ability. And ability is more than two. Right. And the fourth one, uh, that's the one, to be healthy. Uh, to, be ha- to be healthy enough. To be healthy enough to fast. So therefore, if you are sick, you are not allowed to fast. <coughs> Sickness here means a doctor says, listen, if you fast, it's going to cause you a lot of problems. A lot of problems. And the doctor says, you should not fast. Then it becomes haram for you to fast. You go to the doctor. And the doctor says, listen, yeah, that's sickness you should have, you're not allowed to fast. Oh, we know it's Ramadan, you know, we've got to fast. The doctor says, listen, you fast, yeah, it's going to cause you problems, it's going to cause you harm, it may make you more sick, it may even kill you. As soon as the doctor says that, it becomes haram. It's haram to fast. Even if the doctor's not Muslim. It doesn't matter. Understand that? Right. The definition of a sickness that uh, in which you are that uh, prohibits you from fasting uh, is this. A sickness that you fear from it, death. So any sickness that if you to fast, you fear you're going to die. That's the first category. You fear death. Or by fasting, the sickness you have, by you fasting, you're going to delay your recovery. That's an excuse for you not to fast. Why? But by you, by you fasting, you are delaying your recovery. You're exempt from fasting. Or it's going to increase the sickness you already have. Alright? Increase the sickness you already have. Headaches don't fall into that. I've got a headache. That's because you've got a lot of caffeine and you draw the yeah, we all got headache don't, don't cover it. A headache doesn't cover it. Alright? We all look like what, like uh, type 2 diabetes, right? That type of stuff. Right? We look like proper diabetes. That type of sickness. Alright? Number what? Number five. Yeah, number five, right? Again, number five here, yeah, and again we look at what? The thing, the condition that if you find yourself having all these conditions, fasting is obligatory. Number five is that you are a, a resident in Arabic al iqama You are a resident. I.e., you are not a traveler. You are not a traveler. So, if you are a traveler, it's not obligatory for you to fast. Now, hold on a minute. There are some conditions. There are some conditions. You're traveling, what do we say? Traveling is a valid excuse not to what? To fast. But it has conditions. Now what's the first condition? It has to be a distance of yeah, 82 kilometers. It's about what, 51 miles, one way. 51 miles, one way. That's the first condition. So if you are going from this is like what Benham, right? And you brought me there? I don't know. And anything else further? Or further up north? Also, 
Also, a maybe perhaps other layer of this. If you're going to take this position, if you're going to take this position, i.e., which is uh, traveling is an exemption from class three. On top of it happening to be 51 miles one way, all right, you also have to leave your city before Fedra. Ah, you have to leave your city before Fedra. So let's say, let's say Hassan over here. He's got to go back home. Right? And you remember, oh, Zayn said uh, uh, fasting, uh, uh, one of the exemptions to fasting is traveling. Well, I'm going home. When you jump on the train from Live Street, I have to Birmingham. Right? Let's have this Hassan. <clears throat> is the distance 50, 54 miles? Yes, it is. When you try to leave, I'm going to leave about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Say, Hassan, you've got to fast. I'm going to fast. If Hassan says, listen, I'm going to leave 8 o'clock in the morning, bright and early, so you've got to fast. If Hassan says, um, I'm going to jump in the car, and I'm going to leave the city before Fedra. So when Fedra comes in, Hassan will know his way. Now you've got to fast. And now you don't have to fast. Uh, you've left your city uh, before Fedra comes in. There's the conditions. All right? We'll leave you. Is it better to fast in traveling? The red and say, if it's not going to cause you harm, if it's not going to be very difficult, then fast. Save you making no place. I'm more reward. I'm more reward. Wait. If it's difficult though, and you're traveling and it's difficult, and you're going to take the position where I'm going to try and fast. In the book, where you're exempt. When you're exempt. And it's very difficult with that car, sickness, and whatever, X, Y, and Z, then you're going to break your fast. On the conditions that it's 51 miles and you've left your city before. Your city before. All right, there are the five conditions. You find yourself in those, have you taken all, all those five boxes? Are you Muslim? Yes. Are you, are you able with any puberty? Yes. Do you have the ability, both physically and according to the Shia? Yes. Are you sick? No. Healthy. Are you residents? Are you not traveling? No, I'm here. You have to fast. You have to fast. What the? For every day you fast, this is very important. For every day you fast, you have to make your attention. Ah, for every day that you fast, you have to make an intention. Just like when you pray. For every prayer, you make an intention. Ah. Or also the Asaba of Dhuhr Qala, the Qur'an, the one that prays Asaba of Dhuhr Qala, when the time comes in, which is soon, or also the Asaba of Dhuhr Qala, or also the Asaba of Dhuhr Qala, the intention. Fasting, Ramadan, is no different. You have to make an intention. You have to make an intention. Okay? Now, whether your fast is fast for Ramadan, or a Sunnah fast, you still have to make an intention. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, in the Amal, Binyat, deeds are judged according to the what? According to what? Intention. Intention. Which means that if a deed has no intention, there's no reward. If a deed has no intention, there's no reward. And the Rabbi that say at the Shafi school, every single day needs an individual intention. Every single day needs an individual intention. Every day you have to ask an intention to fast. Play. Should somebody say, right, I have my school and my school is my intention. By me eating, that's my intention. Doesn't suffice. Doesn't suffice. Uh, I'm having suru. That's my intention. No, 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 that doesn't suffice. Play. Uh, let's say he to the person says, I'm not eating anything. Uh, from now on to pleasure. That doesn't suffice. You have to have a very specific intention, inshallah. Play. Why does in the Shafi school every day needs an intention? Because every single day is an individual act of worship. Fast th uh, Thursday, that's one day. You break your fast. You fast uh, Friday, and you break your fast. 
It's like when you pray, you pray, you pray to the cat, huh? Allah Akbar, you pray to the cat, when you say salam, that's like praying your fast. You get up, you pray again, after having intention. But the, the Shafi school said, every single day need a specific intention. So every single day is an individual day, an individual act of worship. The Malik school says that one intention, one intention in the beginning of the month suffices you. What man is for? The man is for this one intention suffices you for. Ah, it's not going to come in. Ah, wait. What intention suffices you for the whole month? Inshallah. Here's a bit. Which way is the good those of you want to do a look at it, go do a look at it. We're going to pray. We'll do our Sundays and we'll come straight back. It's quite lucky.
We said that the Shafi'i the Shaf school every day needs a specific intention for every single day. Why? Because every single day is a different act of worship. The Maliki school says one intention in the beginning of the month, i.e., I'm going to fast the whole of the month. In the beginning of, of Ramadan, the Maliki school says that is sufficient. But now, I still recommend you taking, making the intention for every day. Why? Because that's the safest position. Alright? Because some scholars have said you have to have an intention every single day. But I would also recommend you also make the intention uh, to fast the whole month. Why? For two reasons. Should you die, you gain the reward of fasting the whole month. Why? Because you intended to fast the whole month. That's the first benefit. And that's a great benefit. And the second benefit is that should you forget to make the intention every night, then at least in a man you school your fast is correct. Although, although it is superior to make to make that fast up after Ramadan. What's called to remove yourself from the differences between that exists. Alright. When do you make your intention? You're going to make the intention every night, which is a safer opinion. Then that intention, the time for that intention is from mother until February. When mother kicks in, oh, it's a favorite time. Favorite time, you have all of that time to make your intention. Very easy. Make that intention. Plain. So the intention should be like this. For example, this is what the, inten the intention of scholars recommend. In Arabic, for those who want in Arabic, inshallah, or those who want to write it in a transliteration, it is, it is as follows. No way to. No way to. So, Redan, and Adai, Farli, Shahri, Ramadan, Lihali, Sanati, Lahi Ta'ala. I'll repeat it again, don't worry. No way to. So, Redan, and Adai, Farli, Shahri, Ramadan, Liha, Liha, Sada, Lilla, Ita'ala. Which translates to English as, take a look, you're distracting me. Alright, is he in the stock of the information? Alright. Which translates as, I intend to fast tomorrow for the performance of the obligatory fasting of the month of Ramadan. I repeat it again, last time, it's got off here. I intend to fast tomorrow for the performance of the obligatory fast of the month of Ramadan for this year, for the sake of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you make that intention, I'm going to make it in Arabic, or English, or whatever, and you don't have to say it, just have that in your heart. I make that intent. I am going to fast tomorrow. Wait to song. Ghadan. I'm ready. Probably. Shahi Ramadan. You have your sadaq. Illa hita. Just make that intention. You have the whole night to make that intention. Tayyip. Four and And we know on top of having an intention for every night, you've also got to leave out all the things that break your fast during the day. Now there's a criteria here that I want you to pay attention to. There's a criteria I want you to watch the video. Huh? The doors are coming. The doors are coming. I know I turn off. I'm going to turn the camera off here. If we will. Anyway, very kind of me, mashallah. Uh, as well as having the intention for every night, you also have to be about all the things that break your fast. Now, there's conditions here I want to pay attention to. That you have 
clean up all the things that break it fast while remembering that these things break it fast. That's the one. That kingdom, you know, is break it fast. And you are muhtar, and you're not being forced, and you're not ignorant. So, what does that mean? It means this. Should you forget your fasting? That here, the opposite of that here to remember is to forget. If you break your fast, Nasian, you forget. Your fast, your fast is valid. You forget. Alright? And your right, first day, oh, drink some water. Oh, I'm fasting. Your fast is okay. Your fast is okay. Now obviously now, you don't say, well, I, fast, I broke my fast. I wait for all the class, go have lunch and do everything else. Nah, 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 nah. No, 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 no. Forgot, no problem. Uh, uh, the penalty lifted from three people. And it says, well then, somebody forgets. Don't worry about it, you forget. Or let's say you've been forced, alhamdulillah, no one's in that position. Someone's forced you to break your fast. Got a gun to your head, you have to break your fast. You break your fast to save your life. And then you continue fasting. If you've been forced, uh, you are yeah, forced, that's not going to be excellent. Or you are ignorant that certain things break your fast. Ah, please pay attention. Okay. Or can a jahina ma'aguna be jahili? You are someone ignorant of these that these things break your fast. But the scholars make it make a specific point here. Ignorance that that is excused. What does that mean? This in Sharia, there's two types of ignorance. Ignorance al jahat ma'amur wa jahat al jahat al ghayr ma'amur. Ignorance that the Sharia deems as being okay, that's an, uh, an excuse, an excusable ignorance. And ignorance which is not excused. What's the difference between somebody whose ignorance is, is excused and therefore their fast is valid, and somebody whose ignorance is not excused and therefore their fast is not valid? This is a very important definition. They say this. For somebody to be excused because of the ignorance of certain things, and this definition goes to all the different chapters of it, in all chapters of it. The first condition for you to be excused, your ignorance and the excuse, is that if you live far from the Rana, you live far from scholars, you don't, there's no scholar around you. Far from scholars. When you live in some, today after I saw online uh, this island, you know, and this house, the only house on this massive island, like a big, like a mountain type thing, very small, lots of grass, a lot of house here. That individual, he lives there, no one, doesn't go anywhere else, and he's ignorant, as he becomes Muslim, who knows. There's no scholars there. There's no scholars. So for some is ex ignorance that I didn't know that. For that to be an excuse for Shana, they have to live far from scholars. That's the first condition. Or somebody who's entered into Islam recently. Somebody who's Muslim. Ah, like that guy, Chawla, in the uh, Jum'ah, uh, he takes shahada and fasts, and he eats something. Or he drinks water. Who I didn't know. I thought that he even even water. Listen, you just know. Like we say, listen, your fast is valid because your ignorance is excusable because you've just become Muslim. Two conditions for ignorance to be excused. You're far from the river or you've entered into Islam. Other than that, no excuses. There's a ulama. That's your fault. You didn't ask. Ah, that's your problem. You didn't ask. There's no room for ignorance. Like Should the following situations arise, then fasting becomes obligatory for a country. Alright. <clears throat> the first condition <coughs> is that the month of Sha'ban, which is the month before Ramadan. The month of Sha'ban, should the month of Sha'ban complete by 30 days, 
And next day is Ramadan. Next day is Ramadan. Just make a note. In the Islamic calendar, the month is uh, how to be drinking if the month has come in. Any month. Hands up. Brother at the back, what's your name? Uh, Risa. Risa. Hey, what? Uh, with your right, right hand, you can see a little bit that box. No, no, but how? Uh, what was my question? I want to accept that answer. What was my question? question. How does that start with months? How, how do we verify if the months come in? Oh, just look at the moon. Eh? Ah, okay. So we look at the crescent. A crescent moon. Uh, the cre it's called the crescent. What does it mean? The crescent. Ah, wait, wait. Or, or, the shape of it. or Hey, pay attention. Or the month is computed by 30 days. So the month can either be 29 or 30 days. At the end, I'll talk about this a bit more detail. But should the month complete 30 days, the next day is what? Or the next, that, that night, the next night is what? The last time, I don't For the whole country, we don't have to cite the moon now. But the month is completed 30 days. That's number one. Fasting night is obligatory for everybody in that country. That's number one. Number two is that a, a witness sees it, eh, the testimony of an upright witness who sees the moon. And their, and their testimony is accepted by the government, by the Muslim government. That Ramadan then is obligatory on everybody in that country. So let's say, <clears throat> let's say, Anik over there, he goes and he sees the moon. Oh, absolutely. Right. He then goes to the judge. Let's say, uh, Zuhair, the president of the Islamic side. He's the, he's the imam for the, for the country, the Khalifa. He goes to him and says, Listen, I have seen the moon. I've, the president, I've seen it. He then looks at him. If he fulfills the conditions, of an upright witness, which is another chapter altogether, then Khalas. Then he does it right. He tells his uh, deputies from the Department of Religious Affairs, make an announcement, Ramadan is uh, tomorrow, Tarawih is tonight. Why? Because Isa has seen it. Alright? Those two, the completion of 30 days or the sighting of the moon, those two mean what? If those two arise, Everybody in that country has to fast. Everybody. No exceptions. All right. Wait. Different scenario. A different scenario. Let's say, let's see. Um, let's say Dubai over here. Dubai is out near the upper dock. And he sees the moon. Marshall, he sees the crescent coming there. So anyway, as far as he's concerned, Ramadan has kicked in. Nobody else has seen it, only him. Does the country have to fast now? No. Does he have to fast? Yes. Why? Because he saw it. Right? Whatever is happy, he has to fast because he has seen it. Play with it. Different scenario. <clears throat> Let's say somebody comes and says, Boy, listen, I saw the moon. Comes to you, not the Islamic judge. Comes to you. Right? Let's say somebody comes and says, listen, I saw, I've seen the moon. Is he trustworthy? Yes, he's trustworthy. Let's say Hassan. All right. He comes and he says to Sareen over there, listen, I've seen the moon. Sareen's like, all right, Hassan doesn't lie. Doesn't lie. I'm truly trustworthy. I believe him. He has to fast. Why? Because he saw it. And he has to fast. Why? Does he believe him? Does the whole of the country have to fast? No. Alright. Let's say Hassan is trustworthy. But let's say he doesn't believe him. But he's trustworthy. He's still going to fast. He's still going to fast because he doesn't lie. Alright. That's your problem. You don't believe him. That's your problem. He doesn't lie. Alright, a different scenario. Different scenario. Let's say somebody comes as a boy and says, I see the moon. Say he looks at him and says, I 
Eskaya Kosher Tzurim. And it's not just Tzurim, it's a kind of Tzurim Lars. Here, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to listen it. Alright? As far as he's concerned, if he tells the truth, he's going to pass. But you know, he or she is not going to tell the truth. You now don't have to, you're not, it's not obligatory. Now you're gentle, you don't have to fuck for listening to him. However, if he's convincing, the liar is convincing. Uh, they're convincing. You know what? And you, in your heart, like, oh, you know what? Yeah. He's a liar. I believe him. I believe him on this area. Then you fast. Then what? Then you fast. Pray. Why? Let's say somebody uh, is in prison and they can't open it there. In a place where they, they cast the moon and they've got to kind of work it out. They use what they do, each they have, try to work it out. That's also possible as well. That's also possible as well. Fine, alright. If you understood that, inshallah, we can move on. Moon sighting and all that at the end, I'll give I'll spend a bit of time explaining that. Let's see what's so much to do. Alright, what are the sunnahs of fasting? Here's number one. The sunnah of fasting, these are things which are recommended, is to break your fast immediately when you have certainty you have your fast in. Let me repeat that again. It's recommended to ta'jil, to immediately break your fast as soon as you are certain the time is coming. You don't use rush to say, oh, I'm not going to clean up, I'm going to break my fast. No. You break your fast without delay, providing you are certain Margaret has come in. So you look at your prayer timetable. And you look at your phone. If you look at the clock, for example, and your clock is three minutes fast on the wall, as well. I look at my timetable well. 7.40, you look at your clock. It says what? 7.44. I'm going to break my fast. In reality, what time is it? Because the clock's four minutes fast. Uh, Alright, so now what, you, what have you done? And you broke your fast, what? Four minutes early. You broke up the clock. Uh, be careful of clocks and walls. Your phones are more happy. Smartphones. But clocks and walls, or your, and your hand, they can vary. Just uh, be careful of that. Alright? So the sun has to break your fast immediately. Providing you have certainty that <coughs> the time is coming. Number two, suhoor. Recommended to have suhoor. It's recommended to have suhoor. But if I drink water for suhoor, is that enough? Yes. There's a, there's a reward for having suhoor in Ramadan. Even a drink of water. Let's say you wake up, you look like a zombie, you can't be bothered eating anything, or I just drink some water, and that's my suhoor. This is in that, and you drink the water. That's enough. And you get your reward. Having support. There's a reward for having support. What time does support enter in? Ah, good question. For what time? The ulama say, يدخلوا وقت السحور من منتصف الليل. The middle of the night onwards, that's when support comes in. So if you want the reward of having support, it's from the middle of the night onwards. So, work out. You know, Maghrib is what? I say Maghrib is seven, Fajr is four. Out of all the hours, let's say the hours are eight. All right, for example, probably not. Let's say the hours are eight. Half of that is four. The last four is half the night. Half is four in the last half of the night. Okay? Well, then, with the time. So, if you have your school, before the middle of the night, and the middle of the night is about 12 o'clock. The middle of the night is about 12. The middle of the night, the last half of the night is Adi Moyano. If you have your school beforehand, you don't get a reward. Have your school. You do not get a reward. Therefore, the board to kind of have the body hours and have your school in the last half. And most people kind of do that anyway before they do. Alright. Number three is to delay your school. Until just before Fajr, but not too close to Fajr. Uh, delay your sukkah. Don't have your sukkah too near. The sunnah that did to delay your sukkah. And listen carefully. It is recommended 
recommended to stop eating uh, prior to fed by 15 minutes. One five. Recommended. Uh, let's say fed is four o'clock. Right. 3.45, stop eating. That's recommended. Sunnah, mustahab. Put him sack, stop. Why? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do that. The Prophet used to do that. Why? Because he read 50 verses of Quran before fail. He read 50 verses of Quran before fail. And so the Rana said, that's about, yeah, about a quarter of an hour. Who was that? 15 minutes. So recommended that to stop eating. And also Ramadan, do you have to Do you have to Then you eat him all the way to fail. The next uh, sunnah is to break your fast on dates. Sunnah. If you don't, the haram, it's, it's recommended. There's a lot of reward, right? As we're going to find out, inshallah, for every recommended act, it is, it is obligatory. For every recommended act, if you do it, it is it what? Obligatory. So break your fast on the dates. Right? One date is enough. Or a uh, not number, also. And also helping people to break their fast, like I mentioned in the Also, Sunnah, to say the dua. Allahumma laka sumtu, wa bika amantu, wa alika razantu. Or, wa ala rizka afirtu, wa bika amantu. And then have a mama, wa tadu, wa tadu, wa tadu, wa tadu, wa tadu, insha'Allah ta'ala. Or variation of that. That's the specific dua, the dua. You can find that anywhere. The dua when you break your fast. So you break your fast and you say that meal. Also, duas at the time of suhoor are answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you, in exam time, best time. So make, make dua when you break your fast, break your fast. Make dua for the ummah. You know, there's bigger things going on when you have your exams. Also, make dua that you pass your exams as well. In the time of you breaking your fast. So make dua for the windows. At a time in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not reject your du'as. Alright? Moving on. Also, we recommend helping people break their fast. That's a good thing. Like I said, no khutbah on Friday. Get a box of dates, drop it in the, in the mosque. Every time someone breaks their fast on those dates, you gain a reward of that individual. So let's say, uh, is Bagin here? Is Bagin? No, no, no. Let's say Maria, who's not here. She gets, she gets a box of dates, or oh, you can wash it on that. She gets a box of dates, and she puts it in the mosque. And you guys, let's say, uh, 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 Jamal has, has a date from that box. The break is fast. Maria gains his reward. As well as their own reward. Let's say Jamal has read the whole Quran, mashaAllah, and prayed Janazah with the deceased. And did all these wonderful things. Maryam over here, by giving him a date, takes all that reward. Your, your reward isn't going there. You still get She gets that reward. Why? Because she facilitates for you, inshallah. So it's well worth people breaking their fast on the dates you give. Let's say, let's say, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, uh, this iftar, right? Iftar is Thursday. For all, all you need, right? Hope, eat with hope. Uh, make sure you go. Alright, it's all you need. Don't get advertised and it's all for everybody. <coughs> Let's say uh, Ibrahim has a bucket of dates and he places it in front of the people to break their fast. He's saying, I'm going to gain the reward of all these people. And they don't break their fast on his dates. They jump straight to the samosa that's being organized by the ISO. Right? And then they have a date that Ibrahim gave. Does Ibrahim gain the, the reward of their fast? No, he doesn't. Why? Because they broke their fast on the Sadosa. Because he did it to the state. So uh, there's a condition there in order for you to gain the reward, uh, which is why, pay attention. We, we organize the stars at home or wherever. Make, you want the reward, make sure they break their fast with you. With your dates. Oh, they break the fast the mosque and they'll come eat your food. You get the reward of cooking, by the way. You don't get the reward of their fast. You understand that? Good. Inshallah. Well, 
Also recommend to have a wash every night, uh, in the evenings, before, before uh, uh, after Maghrib. After Maghrib, recommended. Why? To get ready for Tarawih. Also, pray Tarawih, recommended. 20 rak'at is, is the most. One to do two, alhamdulillah. One to do four, alhamdulillah. One to do six, alhamdulillah. Eight, ten, twelve, up to twenty. Twenty is the maximum. Twenty is the maximum. And in reality, who wouldn't want to get a maximum amount of reward in this month, inshallah? Tarawih, pray. No, no, tarawih. You have to pray in Jama'ah, in the congregation, though. It's a sunnah in the Shafi'i school. Okay, it's a sunnah in the Shafi'i school. MashaAllah, it's a When we say it's a sunnah, it's the way of the Prophet. So, Allah, I have a question. Question at the end. Question at the end. Sorry. It's a sunnah. Can you pray Tarawih by yourself? Yes. You can't. Can you pray by yourself? You can't. Right. Let's say, let's say, uh, I look for the sisters. Uh, Ramallah is not about every single day you cook for your families, which obviously you do cook, but don't lavish out when you're cooking the whole day. And you don't read Quran, you don't pay Tarawih, you don't do all these things, and, and you get you get reward for cooking for your family as an act of charity. But not at the expense of you not reading Quran and not doing Tarawih. What a day or two, that means that you're a bit tired. Okay, but not every single day you are knocking yourselves out. You're in the kitchen six hours every single day, you know, lavish meal out of everybody. No. To that extent that you miss out, you mix, you don't do Quran, you don't do any, you don't do any dhikr, you don't do any act, extra acts of the bad. If your mother is like that, day in and day out, you should not do that. I am not saying don't cook. I'm not saying that, alright? But I'm saying don't go the opposite way. Play it. So you're going to smile for the life. Maybe it's more common than I thought it was. Next, also recommended in, in Ramadan. Uh, oh, so bring Tarawih by yourself. You can't. Let's say uh, you're retired for whatever reason. You don't have the energy. Can you pray by yourself? Yes. Pray Tarawih by yourself. No, oh, you can't. It's recommended you go to a mosque or a prayer hall. Recommended. But if you can't, pray by yourself. Just pray two rakah at the very least. Pray two rakah at the very least. Do you have to read the whole Quran in Tarawih? No. No. You can pray a few surahs. You can recite a few surahs. It's only a condition for the validity of Tarawih that the whole of the Quran is read in Tarawih. It's, read, it's, it's a big thing. MashaAllah, nothing wrong with that. But if you don't, can you still pray Tarawih? Yes. Pray Tarawih by all my soul. Also, uh, a written, praying written, is also more recommended in the month of Ramadan. And generally, people pray uh, the written in the Shafi'i school at the end of Tarawih behind the Imam. Generally, in Shafi'i. Also, recommended to do what? Read a lot, lots of Quran, try and, pack, try and do one khatam. What's a khatam? What does khatam mean? Mumun is what? Yes, Mumun is khatam. Reading the entire Quran. Uh, you can do that excellently. Yeah. Let's say you can't do that in the Arabic language. In the English language. Uh, read it in English. Uh, read the whole Quran in English. Let's say you can only read a page a day. Read the page a day. Read something. Have an intention. I'm going to read some Quran every single day. If you can read one juice, good. If you can read half a juice, good. If you can read a quarter of a juice, good. Two pages, half a page, one line, read something. And we're going to have a, 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 a threshold, a bare minimum, every single day you read Quran. In a month of Ramadan. Also recommend to do a lot of sunnahs, because present at the end. No? I was, it's the interrupted. Let me finish, inshallah. Also, uh, 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 doing a lot of good works. Doing a lot of good works. So the high socks, if you're going to do uh, a joke of thought, excellent. Not a reward. Uh, doing da'wa, doing good things. Increasing with acts of worship. In whatever it is, mashallah. Saying salam alaikum, smiling, charity. All of these things are rewarded a lot more. Inshallah. 
uh, visiting family, visiting friends, <coughs> learning knowledge, sitting in a mosque, getting a all of these things are things which, uh, inshallah, you get to work the world. Also, the last 10 days of Ramadan, increasing your acts of worship in the last day, 10 days of Ramadan. Why? Because in the last 10 days of Ramadan, the likelihood is that later to Qadr, the night of power, is the one of those nights. Alright? We spend a bit of time looking at Layl al-Qadr. Layl al-Qadr. Why is it called Layl al-Qadr, the night of power? Because of the greatness. Layl huh? al-Qadr. The greatness. It is, a, it is a great, awesome night. And لَأَنَّ اللَّهُ يَقْلُلُ فِيهَا مَا يَشَعْ But Allah in this night decrees whatever He wants. And وَهِيَ مِنْ خَصَائِسِنَا It is this month is a month that is special to the, the Ummah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم No other Ummah <coughs> had this night. It is خاص specific to the Ummah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم one of the reasons for that is that the likelihood or the average lifespan of a person from this moment is about 63 years. Between 60 and 70, average lifespan. Now, if you compare that <coughs> with previous women, like uh, uh, Musa or uh, Ibrahim, for example, or Adam or Nuh. Nuh lived 950 years. So imagine them. They've got centuries worth of prayer, centuries worth of uh, doing with acts of worship. And here's you and I coming in the last 63 years of lifespan, 15 of which we were, uh, we have been, we have been puberty. And then after that, Ya Allah, if we were practicing, then we get whatever's left. Is that maybe what? 50, 40 years of practicing. 40 years worth of practicing compared with centuries of abomination. Because of that, the Ramah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us from that one night, which is better than a thousand months. If you fast 10 years, inshallah, huh? if you wake up and you catch it, and you catch it in the Qadr, and you worship Allah in the Qadr, do the maths. One night is better than a thousand months. So if you catch that night for ten years consecutively, do the maths. It's as if you worship, mashallah, you work out yourselves, and then you do work out, then you do as well, mashallah, to reveal. Okay. Uh, also, uh, uh, <coughs> when is Layl al Qadr? When is Layl al Qadr? Ulama differ. There's a different opinion. But the scholars say it's within the last ten days. And then they say it's within the odd nights. And the majority say likelihood is that it's within the 27th. But you can't say for certain. It's not just because it's the 27th night. Does it mean they are It's the night of the No, it's not. It could be. It could be not. Likelihood is that it could be. But for Bambi, it's not Qatari. You know, the Sunnah. And some scholars say it moves around. Last time, some is either 21. One year is 21, one year is 23, one year could be 27, one year could be 29. Right? There's different opinions. There's different opinions. Like, what are the signs? Uh, what are the signs of it? Or what are the special characteristics of it? But the angels, there's more angels on earth than there is in heaven. Right? The angelic realm pours down into that worldly realm. And they say that Allah uh, that the, the angels shake hands with human beings. The angels shake hands with human beings. Uh, so when you shake hands uh, on these nights, uh, the hands of angels are with them, shake hands. And the sign that you shake hands with an angel is that you, you start to cry afterwards. Your, your heart is moved. The sign you shook you shook with an angel. So keep eye on that. The signs of it, yeah, which these signs generally come afterwards, is that the next day, uh, the night is, is not cold or not warm. And the next day, that the sun rises 
بيضاء وايت ليس فيها كثير شعاع That is not a lot, is not a lot of the sun, uh, sunshine, rays, all right, very clear. Why? Because of the light of the angels uh, that are going up or coming down, that kind of locks up the, the sunshine and the sun. Very good. Now, should you want to stay up the whole night? Excellent. I read the Quran praying, I read the Quran, I read the dua, I read Or you can give life to most of the nights. And you can work on the most of the nights. And the bare minimum, the bare minimum, is that you pray Risha in Jamaah, and you have the intention to pray Fajr in Jamaah. That's the bare minimum. If you do that, it's like you caught, you just caught something of the Quran. It's the bare minimum. The maximum is the whole night. Okay, inshallah. Uh, and then we're going to do one because we want to do. Right, what other things we should dislike in fasting? Things we should dislike. Chewing. Just chewing. Chewing gum, if, if it comes, if anything comes off the coating and you swallow it, that makes you fast. If you're chewing something, yeah, and nothing comes off it, your fast then is, your fast then is valid. And doing what you're doing. The fast is the is the fast. But chewing gum, in which the coating comes off, in bandage of uh, in bandage of fast. Right. Also disliked. Also disliked. Because you know the same thing you chew. In, in Arabic, I think of duban. You know duban, duban. Yeah, you know it. Right. And you chew it. Yeah, you have it. Some Arab countries have it. And chewing that, nothing comes off. Just chew it. I don't know why you can't chew it. Uh, nothing comes off of it. That's not cruel. That's not cruel. But uh, extra and all this type of stuff, yeah? the coating comes off and you swallow it very fast. But uh, what's more cruel is tasting food, tasting food when there's no need to. Let's say you're cooking your, when you're cooking your bariyan. I want to taste it. Let me taste it to see if it's okay. Let me taste it. All right? You can do that, sit it out though. <laughs> sit it out, but you're allowed to do that. Why? You don't want to overdo it. Too much chilies, you're going to knock out the gas or or some or some or So you can taste the food, but spit it out. Alright? Alright? Because there's a need. If there's no need, it is disliked. If there's no need to do that, it is disliked. But if there's a need, like the food, for example, it's okay to do that. But spit it out. Also, uh, 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 giving blood, mokro, mokro, naharam, mokro. Why? Because it weakens. In Arab, we call hijab, hijab, right? Hijab is mokro. Or giving blood, a blood transfusion, uh, when there's no need, mokro. Life and death, different matter. All right. Uh, uh, brushing your teeth. Brushing your teeth. Or using mouthwash. It's permissible as long as nothing comes, you know, you swallow the toothpaste, which most people don't. I don't know, I don't know about you, but I don't swallow the toothpaste. So should you brush your teeth, all right, in the morning, for example, uh, as long as you don't swallow the toothpaste, okay. Your saliva afterwards becomes very minty, all right? That's different. You, if, you saw your, if you swallow your saliva, that's different. Your saliva has as the smell of the saliva has changed, not because of anything, but because it's been close, so it's kind of mixed in or something, but there's nothing in there specifically. Point is, brushing your teeth, as long as you're not swallowing your toothpaste, does not make you fast. Mouthwash, the same thing, does not make you fast. However, they say that, and they say, Miss, no, this work. This work, you can use this work. Same, the same thing. As long as no bits of the this work comes off, and you swallow, and as long as that doesn't happen, you can use this way. However, scholars have said that try to avoid that from Asr onwards. Asr onwards, some scholars are saying it's a slight. To do that after the slight of Haram. Also, Makrum, to overeat in Ramadan. Overeating is the slight. Uh, and overindulging in things uh, is the slight. Ramadan, yeah, yeah. You have to have some, you know, some difficulty. 
All right, okay, move on. Now we're going to talk about the things that break your fast. Things that break your fast, all right? There are two categories when it comes to the things that invalidate your fast. Two categories. Things which invalidate the fast outright, and you have to make it up, and things which do not, do not nullify your fast, but drastically reduce the reward. Right, so there's two categories. Things which can drastically reduce your reward, but the fast is still valid. And things which invalidate your fast, if you do that. So we'll start with the things that if you do them, you fast is correct, but you severely reduce the reward. You severely reduce the what? The reward. Like what? Riva. What's Riva? Backbiting. Saying something about someone, but even if it's true, they will dislike it. Ah. That drastically reduces your reward. Does it invalidate the fast? But heavily, heavily, heavily reduces your reward. Nalina. What is Nalina? Going to this person and taking things from this person and going to this person. You know what? Yeah, you don't say it over there. Hassan, you know what he said about you? He said this, 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 and that. I run over to say, boy, has over here, no way said about me. That's called the name. Haram. If, I, if, I, if I'm fasting and I do that, my fast is correct. When you severely reduce the reward. Dare I say you remove the reward. Alright? Lying. Also reduce the reward. Looking at things, things which are haram to look at. <coughs> also. <clears throat> reduces the reward. And so on and so forth. Right. But your fast is still valid. Should you want to make them up, you can. But you have to. No. But you want, if you want to, you can. But the problem is that should you make that fast up after Ramadan, you'll never get the full reward. And Ramadan is Ramadan. Yeah. If you fast, uh, outside of Ramadan, the rewards are the same. You just have to make it up. Sometimes you have to make, make it up. You have to make it up. You won't get Ramadan because the reward is heavy. Alright, so let's look now to the second category, which is things which can validate the fast outright. Meaning you have to make it up. You have to do Qadha. Right, number one, if you leave Islam, read that, you apostate, then you have to make it up. Go to Qadha. Number two, uh, if a woman, if it's that time of the month, or she gives birth, she's fasting, or she has postnatal bleeding, these things invalidate the fast. Even if, even if for a moment, invalid, invalidates the fast. No, that we don't know that. Just somebody become insane, they lose their sanity. Even for a moment, their fast is broken. Even for a moment, they lose sanity. Epstein, this is something different. Should somebody lose consciousness? Get knocked out, they pass out. Alright? They pass out. Uh, if they wake up before mother, the fast is valid. Uh, they pass out. The whole day. Pass out. Alright? The whole day. And they wake up five minutes before mother. Your fast is valid. And the other is what? He or she's been fasting, right? <laughs> you know, they've been knocked out, but it's not fasting, right? They haven't eaten anything. So that, so if they, um, if they wake up, uh, even for a moment, from the loss of consciousness, then they pass around. Uh, anyway. The next is sexual intercourse. Should somebody have sexual intercourse, right? Their fast is about. Now, there are some things here I have to draw your attention to. Should somebody have sexual intercourse <clears throat> with his wife, okay, or have sexual intercourse, on purpose, deliberately, knowing that it is haram, alright, and not being forced to, in most cases it is, then their fast is invalid. So having sex during the daytime, alright, Invalid to fast. Nighttime, you will not. Right? During the day, 
Should somebody break their fast by having sexual intercourse during, during the daytime, then they broke their fast as a man of Ramadan. In Ramadan, yeah? Uh, they have a lot of sin, it's haram, the Quran. And they have to fast the rest of the day. It's like, well, I've broken my fast now, and I might just eat and have lunch. No, no, no. You have to fast the rest of the day. And you have what's called a ta'zir, which is a punishment from the Islamic judge, you could not have. And you have to make day up, Allah. And you have what's called a kafar al Ah, what's this kafar al kafar al In English, major expiation. You've got to do something else. You can't just make it up, and that's it. No, 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 no. You have to fast two months consecutively. From that moment of pleasure, fast two months afterwards. Uh, consecutively. All right, that one moment of pleasure, you let yourself go. All right, you have to fast two months. Not worth it, right? Just hold it down to the mean and let yourself go. Play it. Now, if you can't do that, why? Because of, 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 yeah, and, uh, because of sexual desires, play it. Then you fast, uh, then you what? You feed. Ibn Sittin Miskina. You, you feed 60 people, yeah? and everyone has to have what's called a mud. And mud is a, a specific weight, which is about 0 0.5 liters. 0 0.5 of rice. You're going to feed 60 people all right, for that moment of pleasure. 60 people. Yeah? Those who are poor. Before, like the rich of 60 people. Or if you can't do that, you don't have the money, then it remains on your neck until you are able to. Alright? So, sexual intercourse, during Ramadan, haram. Uh, nighttime principle, during the day that have sexual intercourse. Alright? Masturbation, when it comes to the end, not a severe, not a haram. Alright. Right. The rule, the rule, yeah, write this down. Here's the rule of things that break your fast. If a substance enters your body through an open passageway, it breaks your fast. So, the entrance of a substance, substance, from an open passageway, into your body. Right? That's very specific. In Arabic, Wusul Aynan min Manfadin Maftuhin il al Jof. The entrance of a substance from an open passageway to the body cavity. That's the law. That's very exact. So when we say a substance, we Exclude air. When we say substance, we mean something that has a substance. Then you can feel it. It's tangible. Can you feel air? Can I feel it? Can I, can I scrape it from my thing? No. So air is not a substance here, according to the red man of Shreya. So should air enter into your mouth? It's all right. Play. Also, tasting, it tastes enter into your mouth. That's okay. Or an odor. Yeah? And you know, someone sprays, right? Uh, and you think you love, you don't break your fast. Because it's not an, it, you can't touch it. It's not tangible. Yeah? These things do not invalidate your fast. Alright? Do not invalidate your fast. Alright. When we say open passageway, the scholars now have said, Every passageway is open except for the following two. Except for the following two passageways. The eye and the ear. In the Shahri school, the eye and the ear are both a passageway 
but as luck is written, I'm all from the The eye or eyes and the ears are not considered an all from the front of the shaft is closed. Is not considered an all from the Okay? Every other passage, mouth, nose, uh, 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 your rear, for example, they are all passageways. Should anything enter into those orifices from those passageways, they make sure fast. But the eye, or eyes, and the ear, or ears, although they're passageways, they're not considered open passageways. Although modern medicine will say otherwise, especially the eye. Especially the eye, in modern medicine, it does not otherwise. But the shark is called the eye, is not an open passageway. So should something enter through your eye, it's not an open passage. So eye drops technically will be valid. Okay, Taha means that it's eye drops all the time, I see it all the time. Oh, your nose. Ah, your nose is a trace. But eye drops. Although modern medicine says otherwise, modern medicine says eye yeah, is an open passageway. So I would I would err on the, on the edge of caution. I'd be cautious when you say that. Alright? Be cautious. Although the Shafi school said the eye is not is not an open passageway, technically you know, it's valid, but he said and, and uh, I consider it an open passageway. An open, he said. Alright. Um, okay. Let's you see, uh, let's say let's say you cough up, you cough up some phlegm. You cough up phlegm, right? Right? As gross as it is, people do that. You cough up phlegm. And the phlegm enters into your mouth. Into your mouth. And then you swallow it. That breaks your fast. Ah, why? Why? Because they say that the, the mouth, the cat, the mouth is considered an open. Is considered open. The rule is anything that goes from outside to inside breaks your fast, right? Outside to inside breaks your fast. The scholar says that inside the mouth inside huh, is considered outside. So should you cough up something, blah, and you cough it up, it's gross. It's in your mouth, and then you swallow it. What's happening? Something has gone from outside, you know, in your mouth, to where? Inside. That breaks your fast. The rule, anything goes from outside to inside breaks your fast, and the mouth, Inside the mouth, cavity, whatever you want to call that, is considered the outside. All right. Swallowing saliva, if you gather all your saliva and swallow it, wouldn't break your fast. Um, but let's say you, your, your gums, your gums bleed. Some people have gums that bleed, and there's blood, right? And you swallow the blood. The blood now is mixed in with the saliva. What's happened now? You swallow something. Other than, other than saliva, right? So, swallowing your saliva does not break your fast. Swallowing saliva that has mixed in with something else has broken your fast. It's raining. Water drops in your mouth. You swallow it. You have fast, right? Let's say your gums that bleed. Your saliva is mixed in with your gums, with your blood. Right? You swallow the saliva. Does that break your fast? The someone is, the scholars say, the cut is difficult. Because the first have to spit out all the time, the scholars say that's an exception. That's an exception. What's the exception? Bloody gums. It's difficult. Uh, okay. Uh, let's say uh, let's say you're, you're threading a needle. Alright? Anyone just told me that? Anyway, some have to sew your clothes. Yeah. See the thread at the end? The thread. Let's say you fast it up and you, you lick it. To, make, to give it some moisture and to kind of keep it together. Alright? And then you keep on sewing it. And then you put it in your mouth again, the thread. Ah, and then you swallow it. Saliva has come out of your mouth, onto that thread, there's not a problem. But should that saliva go back in and you swallow it, breaks your fast. Why? A substance, your saliva, has gone back into your body and you swallow it. Alright? Same thing with your lips. Right? Your lips all wet. And you lick your lips. 
and you swallow off the saliva of the lips for example they should fast so when you from outside to inside they should fast Alright. In wudu, in wudu, recommended that what? To put water in our nose, right? And put water in our mouths. And the sun is the garden. Right? In Ramadan, it's makru. You know what you think? You put water in your No. Makru, you do that. It's a sunnah outside of Ramadan. In Ramadan, it's a slight. It, and it's also the slight to accessory garden. Be careful, mouth wash or you do. Why? Because of my cue is that you may swallow some water. Same thing in the shower. In the shower, right? In the shower, you just, you just you know, gargle some water and swallow it. No problems there. Now, the scholars make a point here. If you are having a ghusl that is obligatory, i.e., you know, grab that and leave. For example, or it's a sunnah also for Jum'ah, for example, like Jum'ah, and you accidentally swallow water in your, in your shower, okay, and in your shower, then your, your fast is okay, you accidentally swallow some water, in a, in a wash that is obligatory or a sunnah, like Jum'ah, accidentally swallow some water that's in the shower, it's coming down, accidentally, then your fast is okay. However, if you dive in the water, and you dive, you dive in the swimming, in the swimming pool, and water accidentally enters into your body, that breaks your fast. So the scholars differ between if, uh, um, a shower, if it's an obligatory, obligatory shower, or also, or a sudden a for example. If it's a shower, it doesn't break your fast, should water enter into your body by accident. But if you jump in a, in a, in a, in a, jump in a swimming pool, and you know, and dump, and dump yourself in, and accidentally swallow some water, that will be fast in that situation. Okay, 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 okay. So if you put water in your mouth, alright, uh, for the sun of a bull, alright, it doesn't make it fast. As long as you don't want exactly. They don't cry. Oh, that actually swallows the water. But let's say you, you're doing that, it's so to do that how many times? You know the mouth. So how many times? Three. Let's say on your fourth, you accidentally swallow water. Is it like the first or second or third? You should do it your excuse. On the on the fourth? No. You're gonna make you're gonna make up that fast. Why? The sun is three. Why do you make the fourth? Your fault. Huh? You may actually act your fault. No sun. And in the fourth, that's where you swallow water. You're going to make it up. You're going to make it up. Play um, All right. Masturbation. Masturbation is haram. Whether it's with your hand or any of the knees, it is haram. And it breaks your fast. And it breaks your fast. All right. Play Kissing your wife, for example. Uh, it is haram if, 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 it is haram if it sexually excites you. Uh, to have milk shepherd, it sexually uh, arouses you. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. Okay? If it, uh, it is haram if it sexually arouses you. Inshallah. As for when it doesn't, then leaving it is better. Leaving it is better. Alright? All right, self-induced vomiting. What's that? Brothers, self-induced vomiting. Oh. Yes. Yeah, force yourself to be sick. It breaks your fast, even if you vomit a little bit. All right, even if you vomit a little bit. Pay attention. All right, let's see if you pay attention. <laughs> Let's say uh, you, you have travel sickness. It's not self-induced, different matter. Travel sickness. You're on your train back home or driving back home, 
and you puke up. You know, some people, when they vomit, it's such a horrible experience because obviously, you know, your esophagus is wet all the way around. It's a very odd, bizarre feeling. For some people, they end up swallowing the sick back. Right? Some of you may have done that. So let's say somebody, because that feeling is so horrible, so intense, somebody may be vomiting, and, maybe, and then maybe try to stop the vomiting and try to swallow it back. Let's say somebody vomits, it ends into their mouth, comes up into their, into their mouth, they can taste it, and they swallow it back while they're fasting. Hands up. Does that break the fast? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. What's your name? Ah, yeah. Why do you say break the fast? Ah, pay attention. Hey, can you stop talking? He's coming up into your mouth and then back down. Uh, and the rule is anything that goes from anything that goes from out to in and out is given out, makes you fast. Be careful. Should that happen, what do you have to do? After I'm done. You make it up. But if ah, sure there's no sin. Sometimes it's involuntary. It's involuntary. You can't just do it involuntary with me. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I just go to Should somebody believe it is money and it's not eating? Let's say, let's say, man. No man here is eating. And uh, uh, Oyam says, Oi, no man, what are you doing, man? Just break my fast. It's still 10 more minutes. Mother hasn't come in yet. And no man's like, Oh, I have to sleep. <laughs> my fault, my fault. They say, No man, all right, keep fasting 10 more minutes. It's not like, Well, I've got my fast. I'm going to finish off. No, 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 stop. Finish off. I would say, but man, after Ramadan, you have to make a day up. Why? Because you should have checked the time, shouldn't you? Yeah? And al asl uh, the, 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 the reality is that it's still data. Right? The likelihood is that it's still data. Right? Let's say, Suhoor, let's have the Look, man, again. Uh, let's say, easy thing, Suhoor. And Zohar and the uh, what are you doing, mate? I mean, have you seen the Sunnah? Zayn mentioned the Sunnah in the game of the world. Fair just come in, mate. Fair just come in. No man's like, oh, let me check that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's coming. What do we say now? What do we say now? I mean, well, he thought the night is still there. We say, listen, alright? You've got to make up that fast. You're going to make up that fast. You're going to make up that fast. Alright? As well as obviously, now you're fasting. You can't say, well, let me finish my breakfast first, start my fedger. No, 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 fedgers come in. It's 10 minutes after fedger. You have to make up. Because I'm awesome. Huh? The mic is still there. The mic is still there. Okay. Alright. Um, Right, check your fast again. There's a lot more things just don't have time to get into here. Okay, all right, a bit of controversy. These classes are, are uh, no stranger to controversies. Right. Every year, pay attention now, please, pay attention. Eyes on me. Every year, is there not the same conversation? How's Ramadan come in? Oh, this mosque says it's come in. Well, this mosque says it hasn't come in. And this person says it has come in. And that person says it hasn't come in. And this person says, I'm going to call that country. And that person says, I'm going to call this country. Do we not have this issue every, every year? Hands up. Hands up. Every year. Right. Okay, I am. Okay, how many understand why it is? 
How many? Uh, Buffalo. Isn't it true that the creative one is one of the No. I wish it was. Easy. No, it's not. So, how do you think? You know, the reason why that is. What's your name, Ahmed? Hey. 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 Do calculation and science. Yeah, without without the naked eye. Okay, interesting. Anybody else want to add anything to what's been said already? As to why we have this issue? <coughs> Brothers? What's your name? Omar. Omar. Uh, the, the new moon's not seen everywhere at the same time. The new moon is not seen everywhere at the same time. Alright, and? So some places see it on one day and some places see it the day after. Alright. Okay. Is it because the UK doesn't do their own moon sighting? Yeah. Anything else? Sean? Like, especially since we're in a non Muslim country, there's a big, a lot of people believe we should follow the nearest Nearest Muslim country? Alright. Anything else that hasn't already been mentioned as to why we have this issue? A lack Man? of knowledge. Huh? A lack of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, well, simply lack of knowledge. Alright. I'm going to break this down, inshallah. Uh, I'll break it. What's this website? This one's new to you. You want the one where it goes back? Yeah, you did get that one. Yeah. Okay, please pay attention. I'm going to break down so you can see what the, where the problem is and why we have the issues. Please pay attention to me. First things first. First thing, break this down. The Islamic calendar, the months can either be 29 or 30. That's the first point. 29 or 30. Right. And it is sunnah. Pay attention every month, not just before Ramadan, it is sunnah every month to go and sight the moon. Which is why I want the ice ox, hope. And John Moores and Uniov to form a collective moon sighting committee, inshallah, in which you then start to sight the moon. Every month, inshallah, and you're the first to do that. So, if the month can either be what? 29 or 30. Alright. On the 29th day, let's say today, Alright, let's say tomorrow, tomorrow, is the 29th day. Tomorrow is what? The 29th day. So tomorrow, at Mahan, someone from Jamal's, someone from Hope, and someone from Uniaf, the moon the committee, mashallah, go and sight the moon. What day? 29th. 29th. When? At Mahan. Because you can't see the moon before the count. I'm not aware. Should the committee, mashallah, say, ah, look, by the other dock, there it is there. You've seen it. Nah. What that means is that that night becomes the first night. It's Ramadan. It's Ramadan. Alright? And then you contact a new Christian society and plug in your data. And everybody else then uh, around the country then will do the same thing. But let's say, just leave it, leave it also down, because it's threatening the people. All right? What I'm saying is more important here. Let's say the moon the community don't see it. So it's a 29th day. At Mother, Mother, right? You guys don't, you go down to the album block, you can't see it. Now what? The Prophet said, Sumu, you look at you look at him. Fast when you see it. If you don't see it, Sahib, Sahib, then complete 30 days. So now the committee hasn't seen it. What do you do? 
with the prophecies. Complete thirty days. So that night is not the first. It becomes the thirtieth night. And the day after is the thirtieth day. You understand that? Right. Something else to get your heads around. <coughs> the Islamic calendar, <coughs> the night comes first and then the day. The night first, then the day. So tonight is Tuesday night in the Islamic calendar. Tonight is Tuesday night in the Islamic calendar. It's not Monday night. When was Monday night last week? In the Islamic calendar. Have you got that so far? Excellent. Moon cycle community, what do you guys do? 29th day at Maghrib, go and cycle the moon at the present. If you see it, the night is the first night of the, of the new month. If you don't see it, what do you do? It becomes the 30th night and the month becomes 30. Have you understood that? Good. Now we can move on. All this is an introduction to the whole issue. Fatma said about Methods. <clears throat> right, the Hanafis, the Malikis, and the Hanbalis, right, say that if the crescent is sighted anywhere in the world, it suffices for everywhere else. Should somebody see it in one part of the world, it suffices for everybody else. Who are they? Hanafis. Malikis and Hamdans. What do they say? Anywhere in the world, if it's seen, then it is valid for everybody else to follow. The Shafi say no. It's got to be a country like Yusuf Hisham. It's got to be a country that is nearby. And the Shafi Ulama say it's got to be a country that has the same sunset and sunrise. Yeah, you can say the same time zone. If they see it and you don't see it, then you can follow them when you don't see it. Hopefully, we'll see that. But that doesn't answer why we have the whole new cycle issue. Am I boring you? Here we go. Hypothetically, although it's not, hypothetically. Let's say, um, Baha over there, all right, he see, he, he's in one part, he's in the country, in the Middle East, for example, and he sees the moon, mashallah, and he says to the Islamic magistrates in that country, in the Middle East, I have seen the moon, and they say, all right then, Ramadan is tomorrow. And they announce it, Ramadan is tomorrow. And then all the countries follow. Right? All the neighboring countries follow. Like Yemen, and Egypt, and what else neighboring countries? Bahrain, Dubai, and Kuwait, and Sudan, and all the countries. And even us in the UK, yes. we follow that particular country. Can we do that? No. Can we do that? No. Who says yes you can? And why? From them, why? Anyone, because according to the three schools, if it's cited anywhere, a universal sighting, it's valid. Good. Paying attention. The problem arises, my dear friends. And here's where I care for the problems. Right. See, all of that just there is to get you up to this point. The problem arises when scientifically, astronomically, mathematically, it can't be seen. So Baha over there says he's seen it. And the whole scientific community say, oi, it can't be seen. From NASA in Florida to God knows who in the Middle East, all the scientific community and astronomers and mathematicians and everybody that is specialized in this field say it can't be seen. Ah, now what? Because on one hand, you've got Taha over there, said he's seen it. And the whole scientific community, all of them, from east to west, 
Muscle on the muscle. Scientific community because calculations are precise. It's got nothing to do with religion. Kufur and Iman doesn't enter into one, two, three. Right? It's science. Now what do we do? He said he's seen it. Science says no, it can't be seen. The Shahri school says, and this is over four or five centuries ago. So these conversations were had centuries ago. They say in this situation, where it's his word against the whole scientific community, east and west, and the oil numbers, but it's scientific, it's precise. The likelihood is that he made a mistake. Right? The likelihood is that he made a mistake. I'm not like in the whole scientific community around the world. Chances are he saw Neptune or Venus or whatever he saw. God knows what he saw. He saw something. Why? But it wasn't the moon. Right? Because scientifically it can't be seen. Right. The whole controversy is here. This is where the controversy starts. When when said country says they've seen it, and scientifically it can't be seen. That's where the problem arises. And that's where the divide starts. And that's where we have the mosques divide. But they say, hang on a minute, there's no way that country could have seen it, but it's scientifically impossible for them to be seen. And that's where we have the divide. So some countries, some mosques will follow Morocco. Because Morocco have their own sighting. And they always, 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 and I've been doing this for about 10 years now. Morocco always matches up with scientific data. Always. Bear in mind, it's a sunnah to go and see it. Alright? But the science always backs up it being seen. Where it can be seen. You understand that? It's sunnah to always do to always look at it. But the science helps us to realize it can be when, when it can and when it can't be seen. So just we still don't see it anyway. That's where the controversy comes from. When said country claims to have seen it via a testimony, scientifically it can't be seen. And then must split. Must say, well, we're going to follow up. Understand that stuff, though? Can it be seen? Can't be seen. 
I know what more, more importantly, more importantly, tomorrow night in the 28th, anyways, I've got to our site in it. Tomorrow night in the 28th, and the moon can't be seen anyway in the 28th. It can be seen on the 29th day, but tomorrow the 28th day. And I, myself, and my family, we saw the crescent of uh, uh, Sha'ban in the Alba Block down here. And, then, uh, and tomorrow night, the 28th night, so either way you come, for local site in the UK, tomorrow night is on the 29th anyway, the 28th. And you can't see it anyway. Play it! Uh, on. All right now, pay attention. Tell me what you see. Tell me what you see. Where's uh, Maria? Maria, no. Sophia. Ah, uh, here we go. Tell me what you see. Um, like the thing is like loud, like more visible. Loud? Awesome. Oh, clearly, yeah, loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me what you see. Ah, you are. All right. So, the green over here. Now, this is Wednesday night. Very different to Tuesday, right? This is Wednesday night. So, Wednesday night, the part of the world that is underneath the green, according to our key at the bottom, green means what? Easily visible with what? So, you can see it. And the blue next to it means what? Visible at perfect conditions. Which means that as long as it's not too cloudy, you can see it. So when the day night, which is either going to be the first of Ramadan or the 30th night, likely it's going to be the first of Ramadan, Wednesday. Why? Because it can be seen. Right? Which means Wednesday is the first night of Ramadan. Which means Thursday is what? First fast. First Ramadan. So Tarawih starts Wednesday night. So that's what I'm going with. And I myself personally will be down by the Alpha Buck at moment time on Wednesday night to see the moon. Because it's been the 29th day. And on the the moon should be visible. And the new or the new Crescent Society. They themselves have, have many people around the UK who are sighting and uh, uh, do many, you know, be a live, um, do a live um, sighting. So you go online, inshallah. I, the weather is like maybe on off tomorrow, all I know. Now, how you sight the moon it takes a bit of time, a bit of practice for your committee that will be formed, inshallah. We'll do this every month, inshallah. Ta'ala. But basically, where the sun sets to the left, let's say the sun, the sun sets here. There's the sun setting. All right? Say over there, the sun sets. Place your hand to the left, and the moon will be up here. So where the sun sets, place your hand to the left of where the sun sets. If you can't see where the sun sets, it's the brightest part, the reddest part of the sky. That's where the sun sets. Place your hand to the left. Then look up. The moon or the crescent will be there, very thin. But it can be seen, and seen, many months. The idea that we cannot see the moon in this country is not valid. And therefore, we have to outsource our sight into a different country is not valid. We can see it. And I've seen it in the past 10 years. <laughs> and I've seen it myself. And I'll see it in Shabbat Allah. The weather's good for us, you know. You and I will see it, inshallah. It means Ramadan, according to our sighting in the UK, Wednesday night is Tarawih, Thursday is our first fast. Allah. Inshallah. Should be live. Inshallah. But don't bring me tomorrow when Ramadan gets announced by a particular country and you're ringing me, so what do I do? I won't to answer my phone. I don't want to tell my phone. <laughs> I agree that I have one of Because I got from Cardiff to London to everywhere we can be. I came off. There's no bother bringing it. Should it should be announced tomorrow night? And it can't be seen? Don't be. They've already told you. You can do it. You can do it. 
You girls in particular, in Sharpie, and the guys, less expensive. Lesson you've got days of your mother and to make up, which probably some of you will have. Lesson you've got six days to make up. See the six days of Shawan, which is, it is a Sunnah to fast. A Sunnah to fast the six days of Shawan. A Sunnah to fast the six days of Shawan. And you fast from the land and follow up with six days of Shawan as if you fast the whole year. Excellent. But how does that help you girls? Or the guys who have days to make up? In the, in the Shafi'i school, please pay attention. In the Shafi'i school, you can fast. You know, let's say the day of Shawwal, not the first day of Shawwal, why? It's Eid, I don't fast. Second day of Shawwal, why? Second day of Shawwal, I'm going to fast for six days. But, I'm going to make the intention to make up a day of Ramadan, a day of Ramadan, like this. And, I'm going to fast for Sunday of Shawwal. And, if it's a Monday, I'm going to make the leader for fast for Mondays. So, you can, when it comes to six days of fasting, you can have multiple intentions for one act of worship in the Shafi'i school. This is an example I'm talking about. Huh? We can fall from the school. Here, here it works. You can become Shafi'i now in the institution. You only what? Fast for six days. Now you can fast six days as they are, and then make up your days afterwards. Or you can, you know, wander. One stone kills two birds. One day of fast, you make the intention to make up for Allah, one day, and the, the fast for Asma, uh, Shalal. Right. So, as an equation, it's one five plus a sunnah. And some scholars say you can have as many sunnahs as you want. That's quite neat, right? Is it only Shafi schools that don't? Yes, the Shafi. What's wrong with class? Any school, the Shafi school says it, it's not a problem. Okay, the only Shafi school, but you can take it as an opinion. It's up to you if you want to take it. Yes. If you want to spread it all out, that's better. But that opinion exists, and you can follow that opinion. Do you understand that? Right? Fast, show up, also make the intention the night before to make up one day to go out on one day, and fast to show up the day of show up. And if you want to make up any sunnahs that you missed previously, as an equation, one thumb and as many sons. And you get the reward. Some of the women have said that. It's quite neat. Uh, hey, oh, hey. Um, you said that if you make up a fast, uh, I forgot, after a long bond, it's more fun. Yeah, you don't get those rewards. You, you'll never get you, You've removed the obligation that is on the neck for fasting. But you can tell the reward, and we have time, subhanAllah, and maybe at the end of the world, have you? Is that the same? Does that also apply if you are menstruating? Well, what we mean is that, see, in Ramadan, there are very specific things <coughs> in the unseen world that happens. The seven doors of gender open, the seven doors of hell close, the angels are here, reward, and your, your acts are multiplied several fold. Whether a male or female has to make up the class, the reward, will never be yeah, spiritually won't, won't be as big as Ramadan because after Ramadan, what happens? The doors of heaven are, are, are closed again. The doors of uh, the shell they know all out when you're around and uh, an obligation comes back to our list and a recommend act, you have the same reward ideas of all all these kind of special bonuses that happen in Ramadan stop. But the point is that uh, uh, you, you can you gain the, the uh, the problem, huh? the, the obligation to fulfill it is fulfilled. In terms of the reward, you never get the reward. But does even if you like. Just don't have any It's from a very specific angle. After the mother, after the mother, the shell in the house. Yes? It's not the same, is it? The, the doors are hanging up are closed. But the mother is because of everything is multiplied. Constant acts. Uh, uh, and they mention this specifically when. Uh, People who break their fast on purpose, they make sure they're specifically more. But after all, that does matter if you fast the whole year, you can even make up that fast. It's in that context, yeah? yeah because it's so much, not that, not that specific. And that doesn't mean that women are, are at a disadvantage. I'm not saying that. Actually, you should not, you should not take it that way. It's just that assertion, where you, you know, the 
Então, se entende só. A nuvem que vem, se tu vai na fase, tem que dizer que está bem, que está a trazer de aí, que é o 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 que é What? Um, if, if you cook all day and... What I would say is this, right? When you, every now and again, okay, but if you're cooking the whole day for 29 days and you're missing out on Quran and doing all these things, it's about balance. Ramadan's the month of Quran. It's not a day bad. And if that's all you're doing the whole day, all day you mix it up a bit, read some Quran, you do Tarawih and cook. Well, all right, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't be good excessive. Excessive is where that's all going to be. Mm -hmm. Well, why? Well, why? And now, when you say simple, you talk about that before the Haram. Right? You say it's, it's Haram, no, it's not Haram. Makro, well, why? Well, why? Haram, no. Makro, well, why? But what we can say is that you're yeah, cooking uh, and, and feeding a family and reading the Quran. That should allow to be Quran. She be telling the day that she should read what man and do things. All right, she be the whole day and be skinny. Now they get this far. All right, fair enough. The whole month you have no time to do what man. And you have to have a lavish thing and food, lavish everything. Yeah, it's almost there. Oh, the sheikh said, you know, you're in sin. We've had that. We've had that before. The sheikh said, I got phone calls and calls and calls. I had that before, she doesn't say it. All I'm saying, allow your mother time to do Quran. Whoever it is, right? Allow your mother's time to do Quran. Allow the women in the house time to do Quran and time to be able to do Quran. Like, let the home of Anything else for the girls? Ayo. Um, you know, you said you can take the opinion on the six days. Would that mean that you have to follow the yeah. school of thought? Shall yeah. Not follow the fasting? Yeah. Like, no, 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 but like, no. so. Just make an intention every night. No, but I mean, like, you have to follow all the rules of Shafi, though. There's not many. You don't need that. I've taught you the class. Oh. Don't eat, don't drink. <laughs> Alright, so make an intention each night, and that's it. Easy. Mm. But you use that, Shafi. I didn't see you there. I didn't see you there. Half an hour, yeah? Um, Goodness you know gracious. Some people say you know, Allah has sent you, but I know my sister did this. I still don't understand why. You know, when you get back up for an extra look at the first or I don't understand the next person you look at. Oh, tell me what you got, what you, what you guys do. You do your uh, Tarawih, 20 and a half, that was it. And then you do uh, an Indian two, and you go up there. That winter, you can do it at a part of the two, like at the bottom, or you do two, salam, and then get up and do one. What do you normally do? So, I'm not going to do that. It's also in general, or? No, what do you guys do? So, you do that one, see the one that you do. Wait, over here, over here. Yeah, so what's your question? Like, some people after they do the Salah, they get up and actually, ah, I'm with you, I'm with you. The reason for that, look, Witter is a Sunnah, a lot of reward, more so than a lot of reward. The Witter means a bad number. So it can be a, uh, you can go up to 11. What people do there, um, and Witter um, should be the last prayer you do. So when you see people doing that, what it means is that they get up to make it from the from the odd to an even. Because no, no, because what they're going to do, they're going to do their winter at the end of the night. Because winter should be the last thing they do. For them, it's not. You know, they have to make up the winter up to the hat, uh, uh, and at the end of the night, they do the winter, which is the odd number, at the end of the night. That's what that means. That's what I'm actually doing. Well, anything else from the girls? Hey, look. I don't know how you said that. 
Sheikh, I need to go. Can I ask quickly? Oh, go on. Do you know in the... Can you ask this question? Do you have to go? Please, I need to go. It's like bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get it. I need to go. Like ah, go on. You know, um, in the Hanafi, Maliki and Shafi'i school, I am aware that, let's say you're 40 years old, and you started praying when you were like 38. So... You have to make up all the prayers. Yeah, so if you make so for that person who has to make up those prayers, is it all for school, brother? Is it all for okay? All for so for that prayer, you have to make a person. Contrary to what people say, they attribute attribute to the hand of school, you don't. That's only that's only one scholar who says that, and the reason why he said you don't have to pray is that he, he believes in the So that person who has to make those up twenty years of prayers, is it true that he is not permitted to pray any sunnah prayers? Yes. So you can't break the rawi, etc. So what you do is then bring to rawi, you get them to rawi, and you fail. Yeah. So for example, uh, in the Maliki school, I only pray oh, wow. the two sunnahs for fajr, because and uh, with the because you have to do that. But for everything else, I leave it and I try and uh, make up the prayers when I was younger. But so a lot of people I see who are old, but they're not, they're not aware of this. So for them, when they're praying the rawi, like obviously Allah wa them, like you know, but. I feel like people should be told this because a lot of people think, yeah, it's all right. Like, be my guest, tell them <laughs> to make up their friends. I don't want to tell them, they'll probably like. No, they're right. <laughs> 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 anyway, back to this. Uh, 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 if you've got to make up the qadams, you can still pray the rabbi, it's just a slight. What? Let's do what Hanel was saying. What do you say about when you have to do the Nisra after the Nisra? Yeah, it's not cool. The reason why is that, see the mouth, the hadith says that um, the breath. The, 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 the of a believer in Ramadan is more, more uh, fragrant than, than musk. More fragrant than musk. So by you using the swag or pushing the teeth, you using mouthwash all the time in the day, you're removing that spiritual reality in your mouth. And that's why it's more cool. You're removing that. Why do you smell that Like, but here, yeah, but here, that's here, it's, um, uh, scholars say, you think there's a difference, remember, they all themselves take the opinion that it's okay to use it. But the majority of scholars say, it's that, it's, it's the slight, because you're removing, uh, musk from your mouth, in the spiritual realm. Muslims say, in this world, it's a thing. You have to go, because all these guys are have to go. Huh? Very nice, Masha'Allah. Say, you know, because I, that's convenient, but it's 
computer, but I don't use it anymore. Uh, anyways, um, so that was that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you mentioned it. Do you have to be in the state of Russell um, in order to pass? No. 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 But uh, also, say in the not, If you look at the list of things that involve the class being a major original priority, <coughs> let's, say, let's say you sleep after 30. You have a wet dream yeah, and you wake up. Does that involve your fast? No. Having a wet dream uh, uh, does not involve your fast. Masturbation, that would involve your fast. Having sex would. Well, that uh, is a voluntary, you can't control that. So it wouldn't involve you. It would not involve your fast. Uh, and you being in that state will not involve your fast. Let's say you had a wet dream before February. And you woke up in this period. Well, we're leaving now. Okay. Five minutes, five minutes. All right. <laughs> Ah, uh, alright, alright. I don't know who to pick from. Pick me because it's somebody else's question. Yeah? Pick me because it's somebody else's question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me hear you got you two. Go on. Alright, let's see which is the easiest. It's the quickest answer for the moment. Let me hear that question. Uh, somebody asked there's going to be a Quran burning in Wakefield. What should we as Muslims do? Cool. So you mentioned the rules of travelling, uh, you have to be a certain distance, and uh, you one have to leave the pope yeah, one way, way, and you have to leave the pope Hajar. But what if you're travelling like abroad, and you're going to land in a place that a different, the mosque is going to be a different time drastically than what it was when you left, but you left after Fajr. So how would you, ta like, would you... So let me... Give me next slide. You leave... I'll give you my own too. Last year I left the UK at 6, my flight was at 7 a.m. A.m.? A.m. A.m. It was a few hours after Fajr, but I got, by the time I got home to Dubai, it was like, Maghrib was four or five hours ahead. So, you can take you to Dubai what time? Uh, like 2, 3 in the afternoon, 3, 4 in the afternoon. Well, but like, so, obviously it's not the best example, but like, on another example, if you were to land just before Maghrib, or like Maghrib was drastically different where you were landing, in comparison, like you'd end up fasting like 22, 23 hours or something. Would you still keep your fast and then break your fast where you land? Yeah, yeah, you probably come to your dog too. Right. Probably come to your dog too. Okay. But you'd still fast. I know. Or on the plane. The plane, right? And you see the sunset. Yeah. On the plane, you have to do this. You see that. You break your fast. Like I, I did that recently. Right. You can see the sunset in and break your fast. Okay. Definitely the other way around. Yeah, the Asia. This is the way around. Every time you go there, anyway, let's. Uh, huh? We're gonna pressure as well. Uh, let me hear the question. It's an easier answer. If it takes time, to have to forgive me. I'll answer it. Let's pray. Can you try to do what? That money is yours, right? You can do what you want. You own it. Yeah. Let's do the Afan will pray. Don't, don't do your son this year.